So we can start now. Is everybody uh, ready? So um, we'll try to uh, demo some Inkscape features, simple features. Um, Elisa and I are part of uh, LGM team this year in REN. Uh, we are CEO of Active Design, it's a school and a studio. And uh, we are mainly using uh, Inkscape for web designs, uh, drawings, and uh, UX design too. And uh, recently we made some little games with it. So the purpose of our uh, workshop will be learn simple uh, tools in Inkscape to draw uh, a little mobile game. Yeah, so that's the result we, uh, we will attend. Okay, so um, for that we'll create the background. Okay, we create some few buttons and uh, assets like the egg or like the basket. And we will add some text at the at the end. So I hope we will have time to do uh, everything. So Elisa will draw, and I will talk in the same time. So this rectangle is the size we the target we may have in the in the smartphone. So the, the size of it is uh, it can be seen on the top bar. You have the width and the and the height. So and then you can go to document property to set the document size to uh, to this shape. Yeah, yes. document property is here. So when you go to resize, resize page to content, yes, you can resize page to the selection. Uh, give the right uh, size in the fields if you need. So now we have this, uh, this rectangle, the side of the page. So we can take the dropper and add a color to it as we shown previously. So then we make the ground, so a little rectangle at the bottom. Take the color and just move it with the selector tool. As you can see, Elisa is often drawing on the workspace and then moving it to the drawing area. Uh, it's more easier if you want to uh, to draw because you don't have to, to deal with, uh, with the stack of objects. So she now duplicates with uh, control D and resize the object with the arrow in the middle of the up border and change the color of its rectangle to have some gradient effect that will add uh, deep in the drawing. So now we so now we do uh, the fence, which is white. It's a bit more difficult. So uh, we will have to uh, make multiple elements. So it's a little rectangle, color in white with the swatch at the bottom. Duplicate with Control D, move it with Control key or with Space key, and you click. How you press several times the space while moving the mouse, so that it makes copy each time you press Space, and then you'll be able to align 
all the selected objects. So it selected the white rectangles and align at the bottom in the align and distribute. And then in distribute, the, third, the fourth button will uh, distribute them equally. Voilà. Now it's done. Okay. So it takes the the first and the and the last position and just make equal space between all the objects selected. So if you want it to be from the complete left and complete right, you have to uh, put the rectangle on the left and the right completely. So she duplicated a rectangle. Just rotate it with the selector tool and resize, and then Control D, move. As you can see, the object is a bit bigger than the drawing itself, so that you have white on all the drawing. Don't try to be too precise on such uh, objects. So now everything is selected on the bottom. And you can see the, the blue uh, is not selected because only objects that completely uh, in the selection box are selected. And then you can just group everything with Control G. Okay, so now we add the pattern on the ground. So. She's taking an image she grabbed before. This, this is a black and white pattern. It's very simple, uh, like stones. And then she will She will, oh yeah, she will vectorize the pattern, go into path, trace bitmap. There would be other ways to do it, but uh, it's a way to keep everything vector. So in the trace bitmap window, you can check for the right option you need for the object. It is, it's very easy because it's black and white, so any object will be good, when these options will be good. And from that, you get only the black uh, vector, the black, uh, yes, black vector. And then you may use it as a pattern. Mm -hmm. When going to objects, pattern, object to pattern. So. Yeah, now it's done. So you can select the bottom rectangle with the node tool, the single needle toolbar. And in feeling stroke dialog, you can add pattern. And now the last created pattern is automatically selected and is applied to the to the to the rectangle. Okay, so now let's add the gradients to the sky. So she puts the, the sky in the top to see what she do. So simply take the gradient on the left in the toolbar and use the color for it. So selecting uh, each endpoints of the gradient, you can change the color for, for it. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, okay. Just say when you're ready. Ah, okay, so yeah, yeah, yes, we will do a, a pause if you need to uh, donate assets, no problem. Just say, just say when you're ready. Yeah, you no, just do a search on stone seamless pattern, something like that. Mm. 
and your favorite search engine. Yes, exactly. We have one texture, one color for the texture because it's only a, a, a path, a copying path. So it's very easy to change the color or change the opacity of uh, all this path. Maybe you can show uh, comment P or to change the color of the, uh, or to do a second pattern with a different color or to change the opacity maybe of the path. Yeah. So in fill and stroke or in the in the bottom you can see O uh, 32. So that's the opacity. You can change here without going to uh, fill and stroke if you want to to do it immediately. Si on veut si on, si on veut coloriser le pattern, il faut faut créer un nouveau pattern. Ouais. But if you want to uh, the the pattern to have a different color than black, uh, you will have to uh, to uh, change the color of the original path and create a new pattern. We you cannot change the color of the pattern like that. But in fact, stones can have different color easily by changing the rectangle uh, color. So it is showing how to create a second uh, pattern now. Uh, unfortunately, in Inkscape, uh, pattern gets uh, automatic naming. So when you have several patterns in a file, it's not very easy to, uh, to remember which you want to use. So uh, it would be nice to be able to rename them or to have an, uh, an overview of them, maybe. If, if, if MC is listening. <laughs> Okay, so I've, is everybody okay with the pattern? Okay, so let's go on now. Uh, so she's grouping again the fence and now we we'll do the mountains at the bottom. Can you show the picture maybe? Ah. Okay, Ali is not ready with the pattern. Let's wait for Ali. Uh -huh, I see. Uh, in fact, you can use the, the bitmap as a pattern if you want, but the problem is you cannot uh, easily change the, the color so vectorizing it uh, make it possible to have colors more uh, customizable so the for the mountains Uh, we use uh, several tools. We use Bezier tools mainly, which is a more, most important uh, tool in, in vector drawing. 
So as you can see, it's activated. It's just under a spiral tool. And then you can just click on the page to draw triangles. If you have already seen mountains, you can, you know how to do triangles. As you can see, she will make a, a symmetric triangles. So she'll have two part mountain to, uh, to use uh, shadow. So she change the color again, uh, delete the stroke and then place it in the drawing and change the stack. No, no, okay, sorry. So she will do the mirroring. Now move it and change to a darker color, yeah. So now you can group and move it wherever you want to place it and duplicate to have other mountains where as we know in Brittany there are many mountains and <laughs> and just resize everything to make uh, it more beautiful and resize, move to place it correctly. As you can see, when we have a group, you cannot uh, access to uh, all the objects of the group without using the node tool. If so if you have a problem, you can take the node tool and just put the mouse on the corners and then you can uh, move the, the node to have better results. So now she wants to do the snow. So just zoom with your, your mouse of the zoom tool. And then you can follow the shape of the mountain as precisely as you can. You can improve it with the node tool after. You could also do it with uh, booleans if you want. Ah, uh, yeah. So you have to do the same as we did. So we need two shapes because there's a part which is uh, in the shadow. So we need two ex two shapes for the um, for the snow. So now we have a stroke here. So change the color of the fill. And then yes, make no stroke. You just press shift and click on the first uh, color in the swatch at the bottom. Voilà. So some refinements now. It's still perfectable, <laughs> but it's quite okay for workshop. <laughs> the color of the mountain is not realistic, so Ali. I'm sorry, Ali, we don't have many mountains here. Just send us a photo, maybe we can pick a color. Hello, uh, Comet P asked if we could have made a color palette as swatch at the bottom. Yes, we could have done this. Uh, in fact, in the, um, the, in the swatch at the bottom, you have 
at the complete right, uh, little uh, triangles which open a menu. If we use that this menu to auto, it access the, um, the color palette of the document. So, so by default, maybe you can show it, Elisa. The auto color palette here. So you can click here. And here you have all the swatches given with Inkscape. And you have the auto at the top because it's um, alphabetic order. And here you have the palette of the documents. So if you want to add the color to this palette, just select it somewhere, for example, here on the document, and just create swatch from it. And it's, oh, that's nice. Because we are in stroke up. Oh, yeah. I was on stroke and I was not on the field. So there's no stroke on this object. So that's why I get white here. So I am on the field and then just I grab the field color of this object and it's added to the swatch. Uh, in fact, uh, Swatch does not really exist in uh, SVG, so this is a trick here. So uh, single color are uh, registered as uh, gradients with uh, two stop of the same color. So, but it works. So it depends. Some people prefer having a nice watch at the bottom, and some people, like Elisa, uh, prefer adding color on objects in the workspace and use the dropper to uh, to pick them. So now she wants to do the blue ears just in front of the mountains. So take the circle tool, put color on this, and then we'll convert uh, the circle to, uh, to a path so that we can get the, the node of the, of the circle and modify the shape freely. Yeah, and then move it and duplicate several times. They are not very thick mountains too, Ali. <laughs> Even is. And they, but they are blue. It's a nice color. And as Div had said, this uh, palette things here from years. I remember it as John Cruz who created it. Maybe uh, in the second AGM it was already here. So how do I know to BJ curve? Oh, it's really simple. If you have the node tool, just put the mouse on the, on the border of the objects and double click. Yeah, yeah. You have. Uh, usually, we try to have as uh, few uh, nodes as possible because it's much easier to uh, to change the the shape if you don't have too many uh, nodes. But in fact, uh, Bezier tool is much more practical in Inkscape than it is in Scribers, for example. So now uh, she wants to do the clouds in the sky. So again, use the circle tool. She could use processing, but not today. <laughs> So it just duplicate using a uh, space bar and uh, moving the mouse, select all the objects, and then go to path union, which will make a union boolean on them. So it will now remain as a single object, 
which is different of grouping. And then you can do the same for all the clouds. You could have duplicate the first, but this way they will be um, they will be different. And union again. Allez, yes, there's a busy tool in Scribus. <laughs> if you didn't delete it, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so now there's a little uh, darker place, kind of shadow at the bottom of the, of the cloud. So she's doing it with the, Bezier tool, moving points. You can see she draw only uh, segments, but it would be better to be curved. So she would grab each segment and just moving the mouse with the left left button. You can change the um, the shape of the curve and eventually grab each uh, control point. These are the uh, little circle uh, angles to change the, the shape of the curve too. This is certainly the, the most difficult part in Inkscape, uh, be able to um, draw the curve we want to, uh, we want to get. Yeah. So, uh, beginning with straight lines can be uh, easier. So then you don't have to uh, foresee how to uh, manage with handles and you can see the result as you are moving them. Well, it's important to grab uh, handles because when you're just picking the um, the line and moving them to to make them curve, uh, the result is not really precise. So we often need to refine with the handles, and then then change color and no stroke with shift key pressed. Okay, so the next part will be to hide everything is uh, outside the, um, the game area. So uh, she select the background to, to uh, which is the, the right uh, size of the document. And uh, she's grouping everything and put, right, put it back the background is the right place and then select everything yeah, the rectangle and the group object then go to path uh, clip and set and this way the upper rectangle will hide everything that can be outside of its shape but it remains here yeah, it's not cut just uh, masked so you can undo this easily at any time uh, I'm saying yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, knowing knowing what to draw is the hardest part. Yeah, that's uh, the hard part of the job. But in fact, uh, drawing mountains like this is quite easy. But it could be much harder if you want to draw, for example, um, character assets. I I couldn't draw like Divad, for example. So. <laughs> It's not always the idea. It's also um, 
a knowledge of drawing and practice. So uh, now we are beginning with the eggs. So make an ellipse, convert the ellipse to a outline and just move the bottom node a bit to change the, the main shape of the egg. Try to keep handles symmetric. So um, its, it's uh, form is uh, well. And yeah, so if you want to them to keep symmetric, there's a button for for this in the uh, in the option bar, as you can see. Make selected not symmetric, so that uh, handles cannot be be moved uh, about. Yeah. So. It's a, the knowledge how to move handles to get the, the right uh, shape. Uh, so that's a bit of practice in this. So now we can add a gradient. So she decided to create the gradient directly in the fill and stroke uh, dialog. So just pick each handle, so this, the center handle, handle node, which is the, the core color. And then you can pick the out handles to change the second color of the gradients. If you want multiple color of the gradients, just have to uh, double click with the try the gradient tool and just change the color for each step you have created. So it's quite easy. Not always really uh, beautiful, but <laughs> it's not very difficult to do. This gate is very good for it. Yeah. But new psychedelic game now. She likes gradient a lot. <laughs> Yeah, rainbow egg, exactly. <laughs> she could have put rainbow egg. Yeah. So yeah, an example how to do a simple shadow with gradients, for example. Of course, it's not realistic, but vector drawing is not made to be realistic, in fact, so that's no problem. Egg of unicorn, maybe. <laughs> Do you have a unicorn at home? <laughs> yes. In the bathroom. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Save often if you if you don't. If you are not sure of your Inkscape, uh, here Elisa has the uh, a beta. So that's why it crashed previously, but usually Inkscape doesn't crash a lot. So it might be good, but save as SVG. Yeah. The text now? So, so now she has, she's adding some text because text is important in vector drawings usually. So simple. You simply use the text tool on the in the toolbar. Click on the somewhere in the workspace and just type your text. That's so then you have to change the color of the text. And so she has some problem here. She doesn't see this tip on clip. Okay. So the text color can just be set as uh, the same way other objects. So just select the letters or the complete text and click on the on the on the swatch or in the color and fill dialog. There's no special dialog for this. <laughs> yeah. 
I was not sure there would be unicorn eggs, but okay. So now I should try to demo a new feature of Inkscape One. It's uh, variable fonts. So doing this, you have to uh, to have uh, compatible fonts. You can grab them from any good site, for example, uh, Google Fonts. And uh, for example, she grabbed Rosario, downloaded it and installed on the, um, on the computer. And unfortunately, you have to uh, relaunch Inkscape when you install a new font. So when you uh, have the fonts, uh, you can then use it. So you have a weight uh, slider, and the weight slider changes. So, oh, what difference now? Okay. So when you click to apply, you set the the bold. The at the, the weight, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then in the in the tool, the text tool, if you want to reuse the the weight several time, you have them directly uh, in the style setting of the for the fonts, yeah. So that you can have as many bold variation uh, as you want. Ah, so now the artistic part, that's, I would say, word art. You put the text on the curve, <laughs> so draw a curve with the, with the PG tool. Ah, uh, bah, ça dépend comment tu fais. C'est pas dans les extensions? Ah, put on top, ouais. So then, you, if you have the text written and the path, you can go. You can select both and go to text, put a path, and then the the text just uh, take the shape of the curve. I guess there's a, an effect for this filter. So the path you can see is here. So once you move the path, the text is automatically adapted to the shape. Beautiful, Elisa, beautiful. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, uh, yeah. Is the direction of the path relevant? Yes, it is. Yeah. So here the path is drawn from left to right. Yeah. So path is a vector, so it affects uh, vector direction, affects the direction of the text. Okay, so now uh, try to improve the, the text a bit. So she duplicates the text, change the color, and with difficult name. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So the right the split view is really cool. So uh, it's in the view uh, menu. So you can easily uh, get uh, the components of your drawing without uh, going to change uh, the node options. So it's really handy if you want to. Uh, 
to change hidden path, for example, like it was here. Yeah. We also have an X-ray mode if you want for more uh, precise array. Je vois pas ce que tu fais, hein. je sais pas quoi te dire, hein. tu vas trop vite. Ok, so she uh, decided to um, make some kind of stroke on the text, but the problem with uh, normal strokes is that uh, the stroke is placed um, on the border and will, uh, will on, the overlap the, the letters. So by using path dynamic offset, so, so we'll be able to uh, increase the size uh, of the later shapes so that you can have some kind of uh, stroke on the letters. So you can do it as many times as you want and add a uh, stroke on it. So good, nearly good. There's some bad effects here, maybe a bit larger would be good. Okay, so I think it's done now. Uh, just have to put the text on the on the game and uh, import it in Godot and uh, make an executable of it. So, uh, is there any other question? Good. Well, it's good to see that some people uh, did learn some tips like Swatch, for example. Did you have enough time to see the Godot integration? integration? Okay. Seven minutes, yeah. Uh, by... <laughs> yeah. Uh, the need is to export the your asset in SVG, in PNG first uh because it's not easy to import svg in all softwares so yeah the problem is that uh inkscape is quite powerful with uh, svg so we can uh, we can attend uh, godot to import or uh, everything so the project so in Godot you have to uh, import the asset in uh, resource directory and you have to uh, to have a scene for that and each scene will have a, a sprite, uh, a sprite node. And you can set the texture of the sprite node with the image. Simply import it. For its PNG, you'll have problems with uh, alpha, for example. That's interesting. Okay, so there are no other question. Maybe.
Good. Thanks a lot for participating, and we we are happy to show you uh, all this stuff. And we hope it would be uh, useful for each of you.